Hello team and welcome back to the channel. So before we start, I would request you, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We are very close to 50,000 subscribers. Also, you will find lots of amazing hands-on videos with respect to DevOps as well as Cloud DevOps. So make sure to subscribe. Now coming to today's video. So today we are going to learn more about interview questions asked in Deloitte. So I am working in Deloitte and I also take interviews as well as I have given my interviews from DevOps point of view. So whatever questions were asked to me, in what order and exact detail, whatever they were, uh, whatever questions were asked to me, I'm going to tell you along with the solution of that. There are lots of uh, scenario based questions going to be in the video. So make sure to watch that. Okay. Also, I'll be creating a detailed documentation on the same, which you can find in the Telegram channel. Also team, if you want more series like this, because uh, last year, like I was giving interviews. So I gave more than around uh, 10 or 11 interviews out of which I was able to qualify about nine interviews. So whatever questions were being asked to me, I'm going to explain you in detail along with the solution, starting with the Deloitte interview. So that for those who is, uh, whose interview is scheduled in Deloitte, you can learn from this video. Okay. Yeah. Also team, uh, one more thing for those who are looking to uh, like start preparation of uh, DevOps and want to learn DevOps as well as want to transition into DevOps from different domain, you can enroll to this course. This is this course is designed specifically for people who want to transition to DevOps. Okay. The course is starting from 10th of March. So make sure to register now, as well as if you use, uh, if you use the coupon code batch four, you will get 20% off. Okay. So make sure to check this out as well. And with that being said, let's get started. Okay team. So now we are going to learn about what kind of questions they were asking, right? So uh, for starters, first of all, uh, the first question that they asked me was tell me about yourself. Okay. Now there are multiple ways to answer this, but uh, the way that I answered, I'm going to explain you. Okay. So the way that I explained this question is that first of all, I mentioned that uh, my name is Aditya Jaiswal. I have done BTEC in IT in 2019. And since 2019, I have been working in Capgemini as a DevOps engineer. After this was my brief introduction. After that, I started explaining about my projects. So I mentioned that uh, in Capgemini, I have been working as a shared resource where I have been uh, supporting two projects. Then I provided some details of those projects. In first project, I'm working with these tools and I'm working as a uh, like DevOps engineer and these are my general tasks. In second project, I explained the same thing that these are this, uh, the tools that I uh, work with in second project and what is my day to day task in short. Okay. So this basically this uh, first question answer, like uh, tell me about yourself. This introduction went around like uh, around almost one minute, not more than that. After that, they stopped me and then started asking another questions, right? So first question, best way to answer is that key. <coughs> introduce yourself in short in whatever short possible like i have been done i have done btech in 2019 in it or csc and since then i have been working in this company or so and so okay after that you can start explaining your project and as i mentioned ki i was working as a shared resource but if you have also worked as a shared resource it's a very good thing okay because uh, you'll be projected as a very good candidate working or supporting multiple projects okay so after that i explained like my day-to-day -day tasks and what were the tools that i used to work with okay all right. Coming to next question, uh, they asked me is that have you written any pipeline? Okay. And what were the stages in your pipeline? Write an example pipeline, right? So first of all, obviously I have written pipeline from scratch that I mentioned in my resume as well as in my, in the interview. So I mentioned, okay, these, uh, like I have written pipelines and the stages that I explained to them that were existing in my pipeline. So let me explain you first stage that I mentioned that first stage was compile. Okay. Next was next stage was test. Then, then we did sonar analysis. Uh, this, these are the stages that I was explaining to them. Sonar. After that, we were using OWASP, and after that, uh, after that OWASP, after we, that, we build the application to generate the artifact. We push the artifact to Nexus, okay, and then we uh, like build the Docker images, black like build and tag them, right? Then we scan these Docker images using Trivi. These were the actual stages in my company. Okay. In my previous company, actually. And after like Docker images available, we logged into OpenShift. Okay. Through Jen Jenkins itself. OpenShift. And then we deployed the newly, uh, like newly created Docker images. These were the stages I mentioned to them in short. After that, they asked me, okay, write a sample pipeline. And this is one of the most common question that everyone is going to ask you to write a sample pipeline. Now, the good thing about this question is that you don't need to write the detailed or elaborated pipeline. You need to write a general structure. The way that I wrote the pipeline is that this format pipeline 
started then agent any okay then after that i wrote environment also okay but i did not write anything inside environment i can just manually explain to them okay because this will be time taken then i wrote in this format stages then stage the name of the stage like compile or something then steps okay in this format and same thing i wrote like multiple times multiple stages and just close it after that in short possible way i explained to them okay this is the basic structure of pipeline which we used to write then i explained ki, okay agent n is for like whichever agent is available which will be used for uh, running the job okay and same thing i explained so this was the general general actually you need to write the general structure until unless they are going to give you some scenario so if uh, without giving any scenario if they ask you to write a pipeline you, need, you are going to write a general structure only you don't need to write the detailed version okay that was the first question uh, which hopefully i was able to answer after that they ask ki, since you have mentioned sonar cube in your resume so what exactly is sonar cube okay so i mentioned ki sonar cube is a tool that can be used for uh, performing code quality check and code coverage then they ask, ki, ask me ki, what is the difference between code quality check and code coverage and second question along with that was ki, what is the difference between testing or like test cases versus code coverage okay so i mentioned that uh, i mentioned clearly ki, code quality is basically refers to uh, like amount of bugs vulnerabilities code smell we have in our code lesser the number of the, those kind of issues better is the code quality that that we call as code quality talking about code coverage so code coverage i mentioned that when we have test cases for our application when we run those cases then running those test cases uh, like whatever percentage of the code is covered or like tested by running the test cases that percentage is known as code coverage okay in similar way i mentioned i, I explained the test cases versus code coverage so test cases is written to test the functionality of our code and the percentage of code that is covered by running the test cases it's known as code coverage okay that was the case of sonar cube okay after that they also again mentioned that because the way they were asking questions is whatever tools i mentioned in my project along with the projects so whatever things i mentioned from there itself they were asking by giving some scenarios as well scenarios will be coming soon okay okay so afterward they asked me okay you have mentioned nexus also how did you use nexus and how did you manage artifacts okay so when they said uh, said that you have used nexus so i explained in short way that it's artifact repositories we used to push artifacts okay then they mentioned how did you manage the artifacts so by that they what they meant okay if you are having multiple versions of artifact and your your storage will be getting occupied so what you are going to do in order to make sure that uh, like uh, the storage is not getting full okay so in nexus we have one option known as cleanup policies okay it's a feature of nexus which basically in this policies we can define if a certain uh, artifact is older than 90 days then it can be automatically removed okay that's what i explained and this was for them it was very crisp and clear so they understood this okay after that they gave me uh, they asked me uh, like because in my build tool at the time i wrote just maven so they asked me ki, if you are used maven what kind of error have you faced with maven okay so in that case what i said ki, one of the errors that i faced with maven is 137 that means out of memory okay that means memory was not enough for the uh, like pipeline to proceed while running the maven task so they asked me how did you fix it so i mentioned i used some op uh, like opts java opts okay we have like xmx and xms values here basically these two refers like uh, initial memory and maximum memory okay so here i can define ki initially the memory should be used that is 500 mb from here it should be uh, memory users should be starting and maximum it could go to 2 gb so if maven is having uh, while running uh, maven is having this much like capacity available then it can easily execute the uh, like uh, pipeline okay that was one error second error that i mentioned to them is uh, very useful uh, most of you might already know is like skipping the test cases okay they asked me uh, like since they were not 100 percent satisfied with this uh, 137 error so they asked me to explain another error in which i mentioned that <coughs> like sometimes we used to support clients okay so when we used to support clients in that cases what used to happen client test cases are failing okay 
but still they want to test their code, other functionalities and everything. So in that case, what we suggested that you can skip the test cases for the meantime. So that we can that we can do using run uh, using the argument d skip okay test equal to true okay this means this uh, argument if you are adding in our pipeline that means it is going to skip the test cases and then whatever stages are uh, present afterward that is going to be executed okay so this was one of the scenario, two scenarios that I explained with respect to Maven these are like error error based scenarios okay coming to next question. So next they asked me since uh, I mentioned that I have used Trivi also. So with Trivi they gave me one scenario. Okay. So in Trivi they mentioned that uh, you can generate report right. One way is like if I run let's say I want to scan the Docker images. Okay. Or let's say I want to scan the uh, like file systems. Okay. So one second. I'm not sure why it's one second. Okay. So. Uh, they asked me like okay if you have used Trivi what exactly did you use for so I mentioned okay, we use Trivi to scan our docker images okay which I can run using the command Trivi image then docker image name right now they ask you okay if you are running this command the report is going to be generated in the pipeline okay in the console log of the pipeline so what is the better way to get the report in a specific format okay then I asked them okay which format you prefer to get it in tabular format or in other format so they, they told me okay, since a report can be used very easily by as an input string okay so uh, they, when they said this then I mentioned okay that is, then you are you might be referring to JSON format okay so they asked me okay you you the you, your scenario is that you need to generate the report in JSON formatted okay so then they asked me to write the code or like I did not write they asked me to uh, like mention the code which we which can be used for this purpose but for you I'm writing here okay so for that what we can do trivi then image okay then here we are going to write format okay hyphen hyphen format and here which format I want so if I want to use this report as J input string I can go ahead using the JSON format then uh, hyphen o and the file should be generated in report dot json okay this is the uh, this is the way in which you can generate a trivi report in a specific format okay and then finally the docker image name okay so this is what answer i could give and this is what you should know okay coming to next uh, so after this this was like most of the things covered then they jump to docker okay so in docker they asked me first question which at the time i was not able to answer because i did not have like too much knowledge at the time so with docker with respect to docker they asked me how to get info about a docker docker network okay so uh, at the time i was not able to answer but now you can okay team yeah coming back so with respect to docker they asked me ki how you are going to inspect a docker network okay so we can use this command docker inspect uh, network and the network name okay for example let's say we have network like uh, ABCD so in this way we can get information about the docker network and this is the command and this is the information that you need to explain to them okay after that they asked me a scenario they gave me a scenario to write a doc to create a docker container they mentioned that okay you need to create a you need to create a, a docker container of sonar cube image okay and they mentioned ki, okay the port should be a uh, host port should be on 8080 container port should be on different port like that they mentioned okay and and they mentioned that the name of the container should be sonar cube okay so for that this was the condition at the time uh, so i just wrote the command uh, docker run okay hyphen d hyphen hyphen name name I, as they mentioned ki, a name should be sonar cube hyphen p for port so host port they mention it should be 8080 container port they mention it should be 9000 okay then uh, sonar cube image okay and tag or version okay quickly they after that after that they asked me ki, which version of sonar cube have been have you used okay so one thing team in case you have already used sonar cube you may remember okay but it's not always that everyone remembers the version so usually like at the time I was using something like 8.9 8.9 something like that. So I mentioned that 
in case you are you do not remember you can simply mention we are using lts version which is long term support and kind of stable version so if you do not remember the specific version you can just mention we are using lts version okay that is with respect to sonar cube or like that okay now they ask me how if some error is coming with respect to docker container how you are going to debug it or like how you to fix the issues okay so in that case basically there is a command using which we can go inside the docker container we have docker logs and then container id okay using this command basically we can get inside the uh, docker logs we can see the logs of that container and using the logs we can find out if what specific issue is going on with that container okay that is really useful okay so that was that and after that they asked me yes so uh, one very important question that you should know uh, writing a docker file obviously i may understand that not all of you may 24 hours remember how to write a docker file but at least remember a, remember to write a sample docker file okay because they are going to if you are there, they are going to ask you write a docker file it's your choice what kind of docker file you are going to write okay so at a time uh, for me it was best option to write a java based docker file so i just wrote from then a base image something like that okay then i mentioned that we are going to copy uh, target folder inside we have jar file and we are going to copy it inside uh, app dot jar on the container okay then we are going to expose the port which i mentioned 8080 okay and then finally the, the command that we were using was cmd and here i mentioned like uh, java iphone jar app dot jar okay this much i mentioned this is the sample docker file i wrote at the time okay so one doc sample docker file you should remember to write because they may ask you to write a docker file okay now the thing is give one more question with respect to docker they asked me is that what are layers in docker images okay so basically this each command that you see each one is a single layer a separate layer okay same thing i explained okay we have first layer which is uh, getting a base image on which we are docker our docker container will be creating then we are having a copy a copy layer which is going to copy the artifact from our local machine to docker container then we are having a expose layer which is going to expose a specific port for container then we are going to has have a cmd uh, like uh, command layer or you can say entry point layer which is going to be executed as soon as the container is getting created okay so in this way i explained the layers as well as the sample docker file okay then they asked me uh, a difference between add user and user add okay now you might uh, this is basically uh, from this linux section but it was for, for me they asked me they asked me a little late okay so you may you might have seen like these 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 are the commands used to create a new user right but what exactly is difference between them okay so basically add user it's like more advanced it has interactive ui where you need to provide more details like name first name last name then other details also while this is like primitive sort of thing okay so this i was able to explain uh, and same thing i have covered in my courses also so i i remember actually okay and after that they asked me about permissions okay when i say permissions that means they asked me how you can change the permission so they gave me scenario that okay there is a, a specific file okay and you need to change the permission so that uh, everyone can execute okay or basically the current user can execute so in that uh, in that case what i did ch mod plus x that is for execute and the file name this was the command i gave and that they were happy about it okay so the things that i am explaining here uh, like user management changing permissions these are like one of the most important uh, topics that are being asked in interviews okay okay coming to next question so one second let me yes so after that after this docker and uh, like uh, linux user management sort of things those are completed they came to kubernetes they asked first thing basic thing what is kubernetes i explained the basic definition it's a container management or container orchestration tool then they asked me to explain the architecture so the architecture i was in a simple way i explained about the architecture as 
API server, then we have its CD, then we have scheduler, then we have controller. These are the components in the master node. And on worker node, we have components like uh, kubelet, then we have kube proxy, then we have uh, container runtime. Okay. Now you might be thinking, how come they are asking this many questions? So for those who have already given interviews, you might have little bit experience. If you start giving more answers, they are they start asking more questions. Same thing happened with me. I was able to answer. So they started asking more and more questions with me. And so that interview went very long. I'll explain like what, how many rounds. At the end also, I'll explain how many rounds were there and what is the exact process for like uh, inter getting interview and everything. Okay. So yeah, so uh, for uh, Kubernetes architecture, I explained in this format, I explained the components existing on uh, like master node, worker node. Then they asked me what exactly is Kubelet, what is its functionality? So that I explained. Kubelet is going to be the one uh, component that is responsible for creating the pods. Okay. And that is the component. Then they uh, after that, they asked me about ETCD. Okay. So I explained in the simple way, ki ETCD is a cluster brain, which is used to store information in the format of key value pair. Okay, this much I explained. After that, they asked me about service types. Okay, Kubernetes has like multiple service types. So general service types that, that we know, cluster IP, node port, load balancer, then we have ingress. So I explained like each one of them, ki node port is a specific condition where we can get external access, but uh, we need to uh, open a, or expose a port on the worker node, which is not a best practice. Then they asked, ki, like they are also asked in between, ki, better option between load balancer and node ports i explained okay load balancer is much better option because it does not expose a direct port on the worker node which is a good option after that rest like cluster ip is a, is a service type which is used for internal communications then we have ingress which is also used for external to like external access to the applications that we have inside kubernetes okay then they asked one 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 more question with respect to kubernetes which was what are secrets in kubernetes so I explained the secrets are a specific component of Kubernetes, which are used to hold sensitive data like credentials. Okay. And this was like the on-premises tools they used. And since I have also mentioned cloud platform in my resume. Okay. So I have mentioned at the time uh, Azure. So they asked me uh, about like Azure, how, what task I have done, what things I have done with respect to Azure. So I explained that after that, they asked me if you have worked with AKS, AKS is short for Azure. Kubernetes service. Okay. So I explained, yes, I have worked with it. So then they asked me, Ki, like, how did you deploy uh, to Azure AKS service? Then I mentioned, Ki, first we will build, build our application, get the artifact. Okay. Then using that, we will going to create Docker images, push the Docker images to ACR, which is Azure container registry. After that, uh, we are going to uh, like mention the docker image in our yaml file yaml manifest files and then using release pipelines we, and along with the yaml files we are going to deploy to aks using a task known as a kubectl or Kube, uh, like deploy to kubectl uh, kubernetes like that in azure so that was fine okay after that they asked me to write a sample yaml file okay Similar to that, uh, like the sample structure of uh, Jenkins pipeline, sample structure of Docker file, uh, one sample pipeline in YAML for Azure, you should know if you are going for Azure, Azure interview. So let me show you, show you one example, simple example that I actually wrote at the time. So this is the this uh, is pipeline that you are able to see here. Trigger main pool, then, uh, then there are the steps. Okay. Inside steps, we had multiple tasks. First task was to... Uh, Compile, second task was to test, third task was to package, skipping the test cases, fourth task was to publish the artifacts to a, uh, a artifact, like a specific artifact, okay? Artifact folder we published. So this was the simple structure that I write. And these were the interview questions after which I was able to be selected. Now let me explain you in what order, how did I get the interview and in what order, how many rounds were there and everything, okay? Let me explain you that. Okay team, so talking about uh, how did I get uh, like opportunity in Deloitte? So as I mentioned, ki, I uploaded my profile on Nokri.com. There, uh, I I used to update my Nokri profile every single day, it's like update resume or update anything, just to make sure that my profile shows updated today. Okay. 
first thing that secondly i use very good specific keywords with respect to devops and cloud devops because of that i used to get a lot of calls every day okay so some hr from deloitte reached out to me they asked me if you're looking for a job i mentioned yes they asked me if you are serving notice period so even i was not serving notice period but on nokri i have written that i'm serving notice period because every hr that who is going to search for a uh, like search for a profile so they usually use a filter to see who is serving notice period in case of experienced person so uh, they asked me are you serving notice period i said no then she said ki why it is written that you are serving notice period i said i did not get call so i just wrote a serving notice period like that and then then she said ki okay uh, are you willing to like uh, if we if you got hired will you make sure that you join i said yes no matter what you need to say yes okay even if you are not going to join initially you need to say yes then only they are going to get the offer letter okay then she said uh, then she asked me basic things like uh, what are your uh, uh, like in what domain you are working what things you have worked with after that uh, like she already she was already having my resume so she shortlisted me with respect to resume, resume my, as you know my resume is one of the best resume you can find out here okay resume also you can find in the telegram group actually okay so after that interview was scheduled first round was of 30 minutes uh, some uh, like devops engineer took it okay first round of 30 minutes and basic things they asked me like uh, basic basic things only like very basic things you can easily answer second round was of a complete like what is better round which was of 1 hour that round was taken by some director director level person that, uh, like there are uh, like many proper hierarchy so there is a guy uh, of director post okay so that guy took my interview and these were the questions that i just explained to you those were the questions that i uh, that were asked to me there were some questions which i was not able to answer and hopefully the guy who was taking my interview he was a very nice guy he mentioned ki aditya even if you are not able to answer one or two questions it's fine because nobody knows everything okay so that was that made me very good <laughs> very happy and hopefully after these two technical rounds uh, i was like passed to the next round which was uh, directly hr round for salary discussion and basic things like a uh, willing to relocate and those those kind of things so yeah so basically just uh, three rounds were happened uh, proper three rounds like general like then uh, first round was just basic things asking about myself i am not counting that two technical round one hr round for the salary discussion these things happened and then that is how i got to selected in uh, deloitte okay now team if you like this series make sure to comment in the section to uh, comment section to let me know if you want more series like that okay and detailed dis- uh, detailed documentation on these things will be added in telegram group so make sure to join that now yeah that will be all for today and thanks for watching hope i hope this was very useful for you so thanks for watching and have a nice day team